So good morning again, everybody. Right now, we are going to review the last topic that we talked about in class yesterday, which was solubility. Solubility is defined as the maximum amount of solute that dissolves in a specific amount of solvent. And remember that a solvent could be anything. It could be water, it could be a nonpolar solvent like hexane, like toluene, so on and so forth. There are two things that are going to be affecting the solubility, depending also on the state of matter of the molecule that we're talking about. One of those is temperature. The other one that we talked about was pressure. In addition, we also talked about the different types of solutions, in other words, homogeneous mixtures that can be created. We can have an unsaturated solution, which is going to have a solution, which is a solution that has less the amount of solute that, that your solvent can hold. We can have a saturated solution, which holds the maximum amount of solute that the solvent can hold. And then we can have super saturated solutions, which are solutions that have more than the maximum solute that your solvent can hold. Remember that temperature is what allows us to achieve those and they're very unstable. Movement, the addition of just crystal of the solute can actually unstabilize those solutions. And as we saw yesterday with the solution of sodium acetate, you can actually see the crystals forming just by moving the solution or by adding the crystals like when they were um, making the forks. So today we are moving on to talk about the math portion of chapter nine, which is when we talk about concentration of a solution, okay? Concentration is going to tell us the relationship between our solute and our solution, okay? Now, when it comes to concentration of a solution, generally there are four different ways or four different units for concentration of a solution. As you can see on the left side of the slide, we can have solutions that are represented as mass percent. We can have solutions that are showing us volume percent. And we also have solutions that can show us mass per volume percent, and lastly, molarity. So even though there are four different units, the one that is most commonly used in chemistry lab is going to be molarity, okay? So understand that even though I'm presenting to you guys the four different units in terms of the math concepts for chapter nine, molarity is the one that you need to be concerned with. But for those students that may be taking other chemistry classes or other science courses, at least I want to give you an overview of the equations that allow us to calculate mass percent, volume percent, and mass per volume percent. Starting with mass percent. When we look at mass percent, overall, what we are comparing is the grams of solute, and we are dividing it by the grams of solute plus grams of solvent. In other words, this term of grams of solute pl plus grams of solvent is referred to as grams of solution. And once we have those amounts, we multiply it by 100%, and that's how we get the mass percent. When we have volume percent, then what we're comparing is milliliters of solute divided by milliliters of solution times 100%. And when it comes to volume percent, that's one of the ways in which, like, for example, if you buy rubbing alcohol, which for the most part, it is isopropyl alcohol, and when the bottle says 70%, or 90%, that's what it's referring to, volume percent. That means that if you buy, let's say for example, a bottle of 70% rubbing alcohol, 70% refers to for every 
uh, 100 milliliters of your rubbing alcohol, 70 milliliters of that is going to be that isopropyl alcohol, okay? Now, lastly, we have mass per volume percent. And in mass per volume percent, what we're comparing is the grams of the solute versus the milliliters of solution times 100%. And these are the equations. Again, when it comes to these equations, I am not testing you guys on any of these. I'm presenting them to you just in case in other science courses, you see these units uh, present. Or if you're in the laboratory in other science courses, then um, you know what the solution is made out of. Now, let's move on and focus on molarity, which is what we mostly use in chemistry. Molarity is defined as the moles of solute per liter of solution. And those units are a must. We are always going to have moles of solute divided by liters of the solution. So in the beginning of the semester, um, about two and a half weeks ago, we learned how to convert from milliliters to liters. So please pay attention whenever you are doing calculations for molarity that your solution, if it's given in milliliters, you must change it to the unit of liters, okay? Now, that capital M in terms of what it represents, it does represent molarity, but we call this molar. Okay, so whenever we are making a particular concentration of a solution, for example, in the figure that we have on the right side of the slide, this is a 1.0 molar solution. And then we put the capital M. So how do we make, for example, a one molar solution of sodium chloride? You have to understand that when we are um, trying to measure this in the laboratory, our top loading balances or analytical balances do not weigh things in moles. Whenever we weigh something, we need to do it in grams. So if you're trying to make a solution and you know the molarity that you want, then you need to take into account that those moles, you're not going to measured directly. There's no top loading balance that measures in moles. So one of the first things is that, let's say that you're trying to make a one molar solution, you need to understand how many grams of sodium chloride we have in one mole of sodium chloride. And for that, if we have 1.0 moles of sodium chloride, okay, we need a conversion factor. Let's put it in the chat. What is the conversion factor? If I'm trying to find the grams of sodium chloride in one mole of sodium chloride, what's the conversion factor that I need? Excellent, the molar mass. And for those of you that are like, wait, wait, how do I know the molar mass? Go to the periodic table. At the periodic table, you're going to look at what are going to be the molar masses of sodium and of chlorine individually. My sodium has a molar mass of 22.989769. My chlorine has a molar mass of 35.453. So I add those two amounts, okay? When I'm trying to convert from moles to grams, then understand what we're doing is that we are going to multiply by the molar mass. So I'm going to do one times 58.442769, that equals to one mole of that sodium chloride. So that means that, let's say that you have a top loading balance and there's only four significant figures that you can see, then I'm going to round this to four sig figs. So remember, when we're measuring mass, it's up to the instrument. Let's say that our top loading balance only has four digits on the screen. So that means that you're going to measure out 58.44 grams of that sodium chloride. So that's what we have here. 
58.44 grams of NaCl. Now, to prepare the solution, we are using a specific um, instrument that we utilize in the laboratory for volume. This is called a volumetric flask. It is among the best instruments that we have for measuring volume because the volumetric flasks are actually designed per volume that you are interested in. So you have volumetric flasks for 50 milliliters, for 100 milliliters. And in this case, we have a volumetric flask that it is one liter. So we place inside of that volumetric flask our solute, that table salt, that sodium chloride. Now, it is important to note that we are not going to take our volumetric flask and just dump one liter of water. Understand that when we are adding the water, we are going to add water until the one liter mark. Because remember, since we are taking into account the area, okay, the space that is going to occupy by the solute, if you just add one liter of water, that is going to make your solution a different concentration. So when we're making these solutions, understand that you fill, in this case, your volumetric flask up to the one liter mark. And that's how you correctly make that one molar sodium chloride solution, okay? So let's just jump in and go over examples for the calculation. As you can see here, the problem reads, what is the molarity of 0 0.500 liters of NaOH solution if it contains 6.00 grams of sodium hydroxide. So here, let's establish that the equation that we need because we're trying to find molarity is that molarity equals moles per liter of solution. So when we look at our equation, we already see that it is given to us the liters of solution, they're right here. Now, the moles are going to be derived from specifically those grams of sodium hydroxide that were given to us. So we have six grams of sodium hydroxide, that is going to be given the moles, but for that we need to convert the grams of solute to moles of solute. Put a one in the chat if so far what we are about to do makes sense. I wanna make sure that everybody's following the calculation. Great. So, in order to do this, we're going to say 6.00 grams of NaOH. We learned in the previous chapter how to convert from grams to moles. As we just saw, we need to utilize as a conversion factor the molar mass for sodium hydroxide, which is what we're dealing with. So for sodium hydroxide, we're going to add sodium 22.989769. We're gonna add that to oxygen, which is 15.9994. We're gonna add that to hydrogen, 1.00794, okay? So my calculator display tells me that the molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 39 or 39. 997109 grams. And again, this is molar mass. So that's going to equal to one mole of sodium hydroxide. So to get the moles, 
of sodium hydroxide. I'm going to do 6.00 divided by the 39.997109. Okay. What is the number of moles that you guys get from six grams of NaOH? How many moles are in there? Let me see that we get the same number. Let's just put it in the chat. Excellent, that's what I got also. And thank you for giving it at three significant figures because we started with three sig figs. So here we have 0 0.150 moles of uh, NaOH, okay? Technically in this calculation, we will be using all our calculator display, okay? But it will give us to a number that is uh, very close to each other. So now, finally, to calculate molarity, I'm going to write in my moles of NaOH, and I'm going to divide it by the liters of the solution. And that's going to give me my molarity. So I divide that by 0 0.500. Now I have to make sure that I express this as three sig figs. So what is the molarity of this solution? Excellent, that's what I got also. So it's 0 0.300 moles per liter. The other way that we can write it is 0 0.300 molar. So just capital M. The capital M and the moles per liter are basically the unit, okay? Put a one in the chat if you're ready to practice. Great. Let's do some molarity calculations, okay? Let's start by doing number two, because number two is just like the problem we did. Let's start by doing number two. I'm going to read it, and please put in the chat the answer that you get. If 0 0.885 moles of copper two sulfate were dissolved in enough water to make 0 0.070 liters of solution, what is the molarity of the solution? Here, you don't even have to wonder. You have moles of your solium and you already have the liters of solution. So I'm going to write the work. Please put in the chat the result that you get. So molarity equals moles per liter. My moles is 0 0.885 moles of Cu. SO4, and we're gonna divide that by 0 0.070 liters. And I'm gonna put the units of molar. I got that same number, great job. 12.6 molar, that's the molarity of my solution. Let's now proceed to do problem number one. It says, how many grams of ammonium carbonate are needed to prepare 0 0.5 liters of a 0 0.50 molar ammonium carbonate solution? So this one is a little bit of a different problem because now we're calculating the grams. So you know how much solution you're making, which is half a liter, you know the concentration that you need, which is 0 0.50 molar, and we need to calculate the grams. So in a problem like this, we need to use our molarity equation. So step one, we're going to write molarity equals moles per liter. In this problem, let me use my highlighter tool. We are given the liters of my solution and we're given the molarity of the solution. 
So since I already have those two, then I need to solve for moles, okay? So when I rearrange my equation, and that squiggly line for me is the shorthand for rearrange, then I know that moles of solute is going to equal molarity times liters, okay? Put a one in the chat if so far that makes sense. I wanna make sure that people are following. Excellent. Now that I know that I have to multiply my molarity times the liters, remember that capital M is the same thing as saying moles per liter. So here, if I do 0 0.50 moles per liter, times 0 0.5 liters, then the units of liter cancel. And that's why at the end, I will get the units of moles. So I do 0 0.5 times 0 0.50, I get 0 0.25. Excellent, exactly, that's what I got. Now, as I mentioned before, it's just that in the previous uh, problem, I didn't do it. But understand that in my calculator, I proceed like this. We are going to use this whole value. So again, when we were doing this problem, let me just go back. My calculator display, let me just do three dots. It was longer than this, right? I'm going to use all of those numbers. That's why I have three dots after it. Okay, so don't start rounding because if not, you will be off in your calculation. So that's why at this point, we need to use the value 0 0.25. If you give me an answer of 0 0.3 because you rounded because we have one sig fig, you may not get close to the answer that it is required. So be mindful about that. In all of these problems, we're multiplying and dividing, so apply the sig fig rules towards the end, which is going to be the number of sig figs. So now we know that specifically here, those moles is going to be moles of my solute. Here we have ammonium carbonate. Let's put in the chat the chemical formula for ammonium carbonate. Okay, thank you, Alexa, for the answer. This is NH4, 2CO3. I cannot stress how important it is that for the exam this week, you guys have a solid foundation of naming. So all those names that we learned in chapter six, Please have a solid foundation, practice. Go to the website that I provided for you guys for nomenclature, um, practice book problems. There are thousands, you know, hundreds of thousands of chemicals out there. So understand that I cannot provide to you guys the name of every single inorganic compound, but I can provide to you resources, the basic rules on how to go from name to structure and structure to name. But as long as you practice, you guys, you solidify in your brain, what are the rules for naming? Ionic and covalent compounds, understand that is going to ease the exam, okay? There's a question in the chat, does it matter which comes first in the formula? The answer is yes. Because when it comes to ionic compounds like ammonium carbonate, the cation is written first, followed by the anion. And that's always the rule. We cannot change that. This is the instances when some students may say, oh, but Dr. Luz, you know what I meant. No, I don't know what you mean. That's kind of like if you put the anion before the cation, it's kind of like talking like Yoda. Um, that is all out of place. So 
understand that in chemistry, there's a way that we actually, we have rules of how we write um, these compounds. So, so excellent. Now we know that for making the solutions, we need 0 0.25 moles of ammonium carbonate. So to get to the grams of ammonium carbonate, what we need to do is take those moles and convert them to grams. Let's put in the chat, what is the conversion factor that will get me there? How do I change from moles to grams? What do I need? Excellent, the molar mass. Great job, you guys. So to calculate the molar mass for ammonium carbonate, I'm just going to put it in the corner so for those students that still need practice with this, for the molar mass for NH4 to CO3, we have nitrogen, we have hydrogen, we have carbon, and we have oxygen. So I'm going to write the atomic mass that is in the periodic table. Nitrogen is 14.0067. Hydrogen is 1.00794. Carbon is 12.0107. And oxygen is 15.9994. Now, let's Put in the chat how many atoms we have of each. How many atoms of nitrogen do we have? Excellent job. Two. How many atoms of hydrogen do we have? You guys got this. How many carbons do we have? And lastly, how many oxygens? Excellent job. Let me multiply these numbers. Let me just write in the carbon, which is the easiest, 12.0107. And as I'm going, doing my work, let's just put in the chat for those of you that have, you know, quick fingers and you, you know, can enter all of this in the calculator. Let's see if we get the same number for the molar mass of ammonium carbonate. por and after we obtain all these numbers, we add them. Más 28.0134 más 12.0107 más 47.9982. Yep. That's what I got also, 96.08582. I always have to do math in Spanish, you guys, because I learned my, like my basis of math, I learned back in Puerto Rico in Spanish, but chemistry, all of my training has been you know, in mainland US. So chemistry is, it clicks to me in English, but math clicks to me in Spanish. So just in case if you hear me count in Spanish, that's just the way that it works in my brain. So now that we know the molar mass for uh, ammonium carbonate, then we're going to change those moles um, specifically to grams. 
So we do 0 0.25 moles of NH4 to CO3. And here we're going to multiply by those grams. So we know that in one mole of NH4 to CO3, sorry, it's kind of tight in my space, 96.08582 grams. So we multiply this times 0.25. Now we um, express it as one sig fig. Let's express that as one sig fig. Because remember that 0 0.5 is one sig fig. So what is the final answer? It's not 24. Excellent, it is 20. Okay. So don't forget that last step. So your calculator display shows you 24.021455, but we need to round to one sig fig. And the reason why we round to one sig fig is because of this value, okay? So the final answer is 20 grams of NH4 to CO3. Questions about the calculations that you need to be familiar with for molarity. So you need to be able to calculate molarity given moles of solute or grams of solute. And you need to be able to calculate how many grams of solute you need for a particular solution in which you know the volume of the solution and you know the molarity of the solution. So for problem one is the question. So we go over or we go, okay, no problem. So in problem one, the problem is saying that we need to find how many grams of the solute we need. You know that you need to prepare 0 0.5 liters of that solution at a concentration of 0 0.50 molar of ammonium carbonate, okay? So this is uh, problem number one is what I did throughout my master's, my PhD, my undergrad research. This is the most common calculation that we do in the laboratory specifically because I did work in molecular biology in biochemistry, in organic chemistry, and we have to prepare solutions often to run our experiments. So understand that problem number one Specifically, if you're going to do lab work in the future, it is one of the important um, equations that you need to know how to do. So going back to the problem, we know in terms of the liters, how much solution we are preparing, which is 0 0.5 liters. We know from the problem that the concentration that I'm trying to make of this solution is 0 0.50 molar because those two pieces of information are given to me. So since I know how much solution I need, I know the liters and I know the molarity of the solution, then in order for me to find the grams of the solute, the first thing I'm going to do, as you can see here is multiply molarity times the volume of the solution to find how many moles of my solute do I need? So that's why we took 0 0.50 moles per liter, which is the same thing as the capital M for molar. And we multiply it by the liters that I need to make for my solution. And then I found the moles of solute that I need. OK, 
Okay. So, so far, so good. Put a one in the chat if you understand why do we have to do the first step to get that 0 0.25. Great. So, since we have the moles of the solute, remember that in the laboratory, we don't have top loading balances or other instruments that measure more specifically. So, we do have... Um, instruments that measure grams. And actually the problem is asking for grams. So for us to get two grams of solute, we need to utilize the molar mass of my solute to convert the moles to grams. And that's what we did here. So now that I know how many moles I need of my solute, I'm going to multiply it by the molar mass. And then you see that I got this number, 24.021455 grams, okay? Now, because you can see that when I compare the two measurements that I'm given, this has one sig fig, this has two sig figs, I need to round those grams to one sig fig, and that's where the 20 comes from. Put a two in the chat if that second step makes sense. Excellent. Any other questions when it comes to calculations of molarity? Yes, I, I always round at the end. Always, always, always. So that's what I was mentioning to you guys, that in this problem, the 0 0.150, I put three dots because the calculator display is longer than that. But I use all of my numbers and I round at the very end because in these problems, since I'm doing multiplication and division, then I have to go by the sig fig rules. Yes, in the first calculation, that 0 0.25 is my calculator display, and I need to utilize it because it's my whole calculator display. That's why I didn't put three dots after it. Any other questions? Then let's move on to the next topic which is the last topic in chapter nine, which is dilutions of solutions, okay? Dilution is something that maybe you do at home or you have done before, or you've seen um, somebody do before, just because dilution is specifically where we add solvent to a solution which increases the volume of the solution. If we increase the volume of the solution, as you can see by definition, it decreases the concentration of the solution. But understand that the number of moles of your solutes do not change. So here in the slide, we have the example of having to make uh, concentrated juice. So these juices, um, I for sure grew up on them. And what you have is that in the can, you have concentrated juice. So you have a number of moles of solute in it. Now the instructions say that to that one can, okay, of concentrated orange juice, you add three cans of water. So what we are doing is that we are increasing the volume so that decreases the concentration because if we look at it mathematically, molarity equals moles per liter. So these stay the same 
But once we add the water, we are increasing liters. And since we are now dividing by a larger number, that means that overall, there's a decrease in the molarity, okay? Because overall, we started with one can, but then we end up with four cans because overall, that's all of the content that we have inside of our container, okay? Now, dilutions is something that is very common in the chemistry, biochemistry, and other sciences in the laboratory. Because at times we make concentrated solutions and then we need to dilute them, okay, in order for us to use them. So when it comes to dilutions, understand that we need to keep track of what is happening to our solute concentrations throughout this process, okay? We have in the initial and diluted solutions, the same number of moles of solute. Because we're not adding more solutes, you guys. We are just adding more solvent. So the concentrations and the volumes are going to be related to each other in this equation um, by understanding what are our initial conditions versus what is our diluted conditions. Okay, so let's um, go through the following problem. What is the final concentration? And whenever we're talking about final concentration, that is going to mean the diluted concentration, okay? Let me just make that note. So final concentration. Let me use my highlighter tool. So final concentration refers to diluted, capital M. Because remember that the unit for molarity is capital M. So what is the final concentration when 0 0.50 liters of a 6.0 molar solution is diluted to a final volume of 1.0 liters, okay? So let me just rewrite my equation. M1 times V1, those are my initial conditions, equals M2 times V2. I'm gonna use my highlighter tools to understand all of the units that were given to me. So, this is my initial volume. This is my initial molarity. This is my final volume. And I need to solve for M2, okay? So I need to rearrange this equation. So M2 is going to equal M1 times V1 divided by V2. Put a one in the chat if how I rearranged this equation makes sense. What I did is that I multiplied both sides, or sorry, I divided both sides by V2, that's all I did. Excellent, so now I put in the numbers. M1, 6.0 molar HCl. V1, 0 0.50 liters. Everything divided by 1.0 liters. The units of liters cancel. So I know that my final answer is going to be in molar, okay? So when I have 6.0 times 0 0.50 divided by one, what is the molarity of my final? 
or what is uh, the, the concentration of my diluted solution? Great job, 3.0 molar. Because remember that the units given to you, all of them have two sig figs, okay? Now I'm going to illustrate what this means overall, because um, I also find it specifically when you guys have to do the homework of chapter nine, that conceptually students can do the equations, but they cannot rationalize uh, the answers depending on what um, the question is asking. Okay, so let me just do an illustration of this whole system. So I'm just going to draw the best of my abilities here. Let's say that here I have a graduated cylinder. Professor, while you're drawing, I have a question. Yes, go ahead then. Is the volume always has to be in liters? Can it be in like different volume? When it comes to dilutions, they, the units of volume need to match. They don't need to be in liters. When it comes to calculations of molarity, your units must be liters. But in dilution, since you are canceling units overall with initial versus diluted, if the question is asking, for example, you know, final concentration of your solution, they can be in milliliters, they can be in centimeters cubed, they can be in any unit of volume. Okay, thank you. No problem. So let's say that this is a one liter graduated cylinder. And these are my markings for my graduated cylinder. Let's say that this is 0 0.25 liters. This is 0 0.5, zero liters. This is 0 0.75 liters. This is 1.0 liters, okay? Let's just assume that that's what it is. So in this dilution, okay, looking at what we're doing, that six molars of HCl, I added to my container half a liter of it. So let's say, let me just use a random color for the HCL. Let me just use brown. HCL is now brown. HCL is just a clear colorless solution. But to my container, Let's say that the problem is stating that I added half a liter of it, okay? So this right here, is my 6.0 molar HCl in my container, right? My final volume of my solution is one liter. So what this means, you guys, it's that I added another half a liter to my initial concentrated solution. So this area that I'm highlighting in blue is the water that I use to make this solution. The reason why I bring this up is because I know that in the homework, there is a question about specifically how much water needs to be added to a particular solution. And I want you to rationalize this. And I'm gonna make a note here. V2 is not the amount of water needed. It is the final volume of the solution.
okay? So be careful when you actually do this problem. In calculations where you need to calculate how much water you need to add. So for the water question, let me just do it in the corner. So you guys have those notes. When you need to know the amount of solvent that is needed for diluting a solution, if the solvent is water, right? So that is going to be the solvent needed is going to be V2 minus V1. So if you have a question where it says how much water is needed, okay? And I cannot stress this enough. It's not that I'm trying to just, you know, be persistent, although I am, that you guys read the question. This is a skill, you guys, that you need in everyday life. You need to read what is given to you. You need to read instructions. I don't want you to just look at a problem, look at numbers, plug them in, and that's it. If you don't understand the question, understand that you will have problems in getting the correct answer. So again, if the question says, how much water is needed for making this particular solution? Remember that the way that you find that is doing V2 minus V1. In this problem, we were calculating um, the final concentration, which we did, but I'm trying to bring this up already because I know there is a problem like this in the homework. Put a one in the chat if you're ready to practice some dilution questions. Great. These are two of the several questions that we have there in the in-class worksheet which today I'm going to post um, the answers for the in-class worksheets. So you guys have them available for those students that have been practicing utilizing those so you can verify um, your work. The first uh, dilution question says, if 30.0 milliliters of a 12.0 molar HCl stock solution were diluted to a volume of 500 decimal place milliliters what is the molarity of the diluted solution? So this problem number one is just like the example that we did in the previous slide. Problem number two, it says, if 27.5 milliliters of 16.0 nitric acid solution is added to water to make a 327.5 milliliter solution, what is the molarity of the diluted solution. Again, this problem is similar to the problem that we just did, okay? So at this time, I'm going to give you guys three minutes to utilize the equations, okay? And find the molarity, but we are also going to address the whole idea of the volume of solvent that needs to be um, added to the system, okay? Just because I want you guys to be ready for that question in the chapter quiz. So I will give you guys three minutes to complete these two problems.
let's go through these two problems. We're trying to find the molarity of the diluted solution. So we know that M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. To find M2, we need the molarity of the concentrated solution times the volume that we utilize of that concentrated solution, everything divided by the diluted volume, okay? So in this case, my concentrated solution, which is called in chemistry a stock solution, is 12.0 molar HCl. I use of that 30.0 milliliters. We diluted that to a volume of 500 decimal place milliliters. So this is why a few moments ago, I mentioned to you guys that for dilution questions, if the volumes, are in milliliters of what you used of the concentrated in the final volume, that doesn't matter because when we're calculating molarity of my diluted solutions, the milliliters cancel each other. So make sure that you look at the units for volume that M1, that M, uh, sorry, that V1 and that V2 must match. Excellent job, you guys. Yes, that's the number that I also obtained. 0 0.720 molar HCl. That's what I also obtained. Okay. And we go to illustrate this. Okay. Remember, how much solvent? was added to make this solution. How much solvent did we use to make this solution? Great job, Daniela. So we use 470 milliliters to make this solution, okay? So we use 470 milliliters of solvent plus the 30 milliliters of that 12.0 molar HCl that's what made the 500 milliliters of that 0 0.720 molar HCl solution. Go ahead, Gina, ask your question. So this is something you want us to look out for when we do our we do our quizzes so our question should always be how much solvent was added like regardless we just have to make sure that we understand what we're being asked so yes. the 470 comes from the subtraction of the solvent minus the volume that we are given so this calculation of 470 is v2 minus v1 let me Got it. Okay. open on my end. Give me a few moments. Let me double check. Um, let me check on Canvas because I know there is a question like this. Oh, wait, it's not opening on my end. Give me one moment. Let me open my Canvas because I want to make sure that you understand that there is a question like this in the chapter quiz. 
And I don't want you guys to miss that in the chapter quiz or the exam for that matter. Um, mm -mm -mm. Let me open chapter quiz for nine to two. two. Assignments, chapter nine quiz. Click on preview. So question 15 in the chapter nine quiz, it says, how many milliliters of water should be added to 50.0 milliliters of a 15.0 molar H2SO4 solution to give the final concentration of 0 0.300 molar, okay? So when you read question 15, it's saying how much water should be added. Now, students from the number standpoint understand that they need to calculate V2 but they assume that V2 is their final answer. And, the, and that is not the case because the question wants you to know how much water should be added, not what is the final concentration of the diluted solution. So be aware that in question 15, after you calculate your V2, you need to do V2 minus V1 to know how much water should be added. I just want you guys to get those points. I don't want you to be missing those points. And so, so our question final, 15. Go, go ahead. So our final answer would be the amount of solution. So it would be the, the um, sorry, my words are gone from me. It would be the amount after we subtract V2 from V1. Exactly. So what you okay. will see is that in question 15, you must calculate V2 because V2 is not given to you. And then once we have V2, we subtract V2 from V1 to give us our final answer for question 15. Exactly, because the question okay. 15 is asking you how much water you need. Again, if students are not paying attention, they're like, oh, this is super easy. I calculate V2 and I'm done. No, you're not. The question is not asking for the final volume of the diluted solution is asking for the water. So again, these questions that we're practicing right here is calculating molarity. But I'm trying to prepare you guys for, again, questions like question 15, in which you are calculating V2, makes sense. But there's one more step that you need to do. You need to realize that V2 is not how much water are you adding, V2 is a calculation of like, what is your volume of your diluted solution? Okay, thank you. Cause I feel like I ran into that a few times in some of the quizzes where like my answer that I had gotten, I, I really struggled to get the answer that was correct um, for the chapter quizzes because I, maybe I wasn't understanding the questions correctly, mm -hmm. but after some time I got it, but it's just sometimes the questions are tricky. They're not tricky. I'm not saying they're tricky. They're just worded where you have to think a little bit more. Like I was telling the, like I was telling the class. Yeah, and and it comes with the territory. I'm not trying to trick anybody. I'm trying to get you guys to understand that <clears throat> in science, it doesn't matter the discipline. It's going to be here in chemistry, microbiology, physiology, anatomy. We all have terms that we utilize. We all have a specific language that we utilize in order to word our questions. And it is important that you guys become fluent in what the question is asking and not give it your own interpretation, but know specifically what is the question or the professor wants me to answer because this is the reality. I know that you guys are very capable of if I give you numbers, you know how to enter them in the calculator. I know you guys can do that. What I'm trying to also teach you along the way is critical thinking, because that is one of the main skills that you learn in chemistry classes and other science courses for that, uh, for a matter of fact. 
critical thinking doesn't matter where you go, you guys, in your career will always help you. Always. Because critical thinking is what is going to make you just go one step above. Because you will be able to rationalize what is the problem and how do I solve it? Okay. So there's a question in the chat saying V2 is M1 times V1 divided by M2. That is correct. That's how we solve for V2. But again, like I was uh, mentioning a few moments ago, remember that V2 is just the volume of your final concentration. It is not how much solvent you need to add to the solution. So let's go through the second problem. In the second problem, we're also calculating the molarity of the diluted solution. So we're calculating for M2. So we have M2 equals M1 times V1, everything divided by V2. Now, when it comes to this, understand that M1 is going to be that stock solution, that concentrated solution, which is 16.0 molar of nitric acid. We're gonna learn how to name um, acids in the next chapter. This is HNO3, just to give you guys a preview. And then we're going to multiply times V1, which is 27.5 milliliters. The volume of my solution, as you can see, is 327.5 milliliters. The units of milliliters are going to cancel each other. Now, when we do this and we multiply that 16.0 times 27.5 and we divide it by 327.5, what do we get as the molarity of my diluted solution? Let's put it in the chat. Great, that's what I also obtained. Excellent job, you guys. 1.34 molar in nitric acid is HNO3, okay? So going back to the whole thing about addition of water, how much water, because I know that in terms of acids, water is gonna be the preferred solvent. And the question says that water was added up to that volume of 327.5. How much water did we add to make this 1.34 molar solution? Great job, Francisco. Exactly, 300 milliliters. All we did was we subtracted V2 from V1, okay? Remember that in question 15, you need to calculate V2. But great job, you guys. Any questions in terms of dilutions? Great. So at this time, it is 1019. We are going on break.